the National Working Committee and all that to determine quite a number of things to the extent that uh, in most cases you find out that what actually happened uh, in the party within the locality do not actually matter. This problem is not peculiar to any political party in Nigeria. It cuts across all the political parties. I've been a member of PDP since September 1998 when the PDP was launched in DTC Oka. I was then an undergraduate in the Naga School University. But sometime uh, two or three years ago, when we were trying to have an alternative platform because of the peculiar challenges the PDP was having then, our coordinator then was the high chief at the place. We looked at the challenges political parties were having and we decided the best thing is to find a way to, uh, to ensure that the only people who determine whatever the political parties do are all just the members of the political party. We decided to have members and every member must contribute funding of the political parties, not by individuals. Because political party is just like another association where you need to make political where you need to make financial commitments. Before you be a member. Membership comes with your you don't have to work that in the clients where people pay tax. It's easier to hold government accountable. It's the same thing in political parties where you don't know every member of the political party hopes to get the cake from people who want to aspire for one thing or another. You find that the control will not be with the people who are there. Uh, what we did in the APD then was to ensure that every member of the party must be involved in picking the candidate of the party. That's called the direct primaries from what people are canvassing now. Direct primaries means that we have to be actively involved in selecting who represents the political party so that if you are convincing the candidate you will always go to town with whatever the participation part of the decision making process the other thing that we did was to make sure that the party should invest in electronic data collection every member of the party his data should be with the political party and you can vote you must vote electronically of course you looked utopian then but actually I'm not sure it will uh, in any way encourage uh, people faithfulness in political parties. If you are a member of a political party you hope to run for an election in the next three years, in the next four years, as the case may be. You start putting the structures together. You start mobilizing the people. You start taking decisions. Unfortunately, there in the party constitution there is a provision that somebody who has not been in the party for two years issue. The issue is that the major provision is behind that, that grants a waiver for people who are not part of what is happening at the local to decide on who can run for the election. How, how would that encourage commitment? And the perception of people on how primaries how their candidates are selected has a lot to do on their understanding and belief in the process. And one way or the other, it affects democracy. So I think um, it's a very big challenge. The political parties should get it right. Uh, if, I, if you ask me, I think the idea of having the power to, uh, you know, um, Grand Weber, for instance, somebody like me, although you could say that I was part of the process. Elections were done in Anambra State. Most of the candidates have always had waivers, meaning that they've not been part of the party, they've not been part of the process. Look at what happened in the last 1999 when the National Assembly moved across the party line. And they got back to their political parties and got, and got the tickets. 
I'm sure you do not assume that those political parties do not have candidates or potential aspiring potential candidates mobilizing the party, putting the structure together. And they will tell you that somebody has office. If somebody has office, why do, for instance, in the United States, why didn't Obasi, if Obasi is the governor, and as the governor, he has the clout to win an election? Does he have the floor? Yes, go on. Okay, look at what's happening, what is happening in the United States. People give you the impression that the members of the political parties do not matter. That once the person is coming with enough class to win an election, so why is the Basaki go to the court party? Why is the Basaki consider? So you find out that you still take your decision, believing that those people down the line will always align with you. And at the end of the day, they have little or no role to play in who, who gets the party ticket. For, first of all, making sure that the political parties are strong. And the first thing to do is to make sure that the members of the political parties are people who consider themselves members of a political party with high responsibility to, to ensure that they contribute and they ensure that they see to how the party runs. Not some other people bringing in billions to tell you what happens. That confidence, have that trust, have free part of the political party. If the person is elected tomorrow, if he's not doing anything, trust me, they will have the confidence to say, no, this was not what we agreed before we gave you our vote to be our candidate. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, I believe I believe you've you finished your submission. Okay, I okay. thought I just have a few seconds because you know communication between us is uh, is playing up. So if I could summarize what uh, the point I was trying to make in summary is that um, we should, as a nation, find a solution to what is happening in all the political parties, have things structured. And the problem, as I said earlier, is not peculiar to a political party. It's, it's across board. APC, PDP, APGA, a few people are the center take decisions. Even on who is the chancellorship candidate, who is a member of the House of Assembly. You find out that in some cases you have automatic tickets for everybody who has been this or who has been that. It usually doesn't go well. That's where the apathy starts. And once you have that apathy starting from the political parties, it's a very big problem. That's why we have we continue to have money banks hijack positions. That's why we continue to have people who have contacts at the center hijack positions, even when they are not even when they are not on ground, in terms of having the people behind them. For us to get it right in our democracy, we need to make the people feel part of the process. We need to make the people feel that they are the ones taking the decisions. We need to make people to understand that they have to participate because people who are representing them are more like their agents. People who are representing them, they are the bosses of the people who are representing them. But what we have here is, is the other way around where people come and feel that they are. But I used to, I, there's one politician in Anambra that he believes that everybody has got their prize. He has a business with you on election, close to the election time, he comes to you, he name your prize, he pays. With that, the, the trust on what is going on will not be People see that as probably that they go and get their um, whatever, the palliative from the political parties and whatever they can take. So they are not interested in who becomes what. And they don't, their commitment is not there. And you can't tell me that they, they restrict that to the political. That's why uh, vote buying. Vote buying is not without general elections. If we think that vote buying is without, the problem starts with our general elections, we are deceived ourselves. A situation where people collect 500,000, 200,000, 300,000 to vote for a particular candidate in an election, to be a candidate in a primary. So of course, the person will expect more for the main election. So it's bazaar. So we need to change that. We need to change the perception. We need to change that understanding. 
We need to change that mindset if we are going to get our democracy right. And if we don't start from the political parties, we are wasting our time, to, if you ask me. That is my opinion on that. Okay, so thank you. Um, thank you very much for, for, the, for your submission. I will be calling on uh, 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 you know, Mr. Gaba, the second. But before I do, I want to acknowledge uh, the former Minister of Sports, that is uh, uh, Mr. Solomon Dalung. Uh, welcome to this conversation. And, uh, so and I can also see uh, Professor uh, Femi Olufimilade here. So um, I hope uh, uh, you know Mr. Dalong stays um, in this call because I would want him to have some input afterwards. Please, at the same time, I am now calling on um, Gaba. Please, you can unmute yourself. And mm, uh, swap. Your so, thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much, distinguished uh, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I once, once more apologize for doing it late. I, it's actually uh, time for prayer at 7 o'clock here, so I was praying when it started. So, and um, going back uh, to the discussion, um, I can see what uh, uh, Mr. Ogunike was saying, and it was actually making a whole lot of sense regarding political party uh, arrangement in Nigeria. So the problem, the root cause of all these political challenges we have, by the way, um, I am a member of APC, and uh, of course, you understand the crisis that we are having now between the APC and the All the having a whole lot of instability. So, but the, the root cause of the problem and what is causing political um, turbulence in Nigeria's political space is because we did not actually fundamentally define the principle of what's supposed to govern a political party participation. And what's supposed to be the principle to govern political party is actually ideology. It's something that is coming from psychological inclination towards each member to participate in a given community to exercise his democratic right. So the root cause of democracy itself uh, the, the, root, uh, the, the root of democracy itself is actually political party. And what defines the political party participation is your inclination towards believing into the principles and structures of the party, and also its direct connection with your social, moral, and even economic uh, disposition towards a society. That is actually what, what defines the principle of left and the right ideology. Like a contemporary Americans, um, if you look at, oh, I can say Western democracies, they have usually four keywords that define where a politician or a person who wants to participate actively in politics is supposed to be to be defined whether that person is going on the right or the person is going on the left. And this is actually going everywhere, including within the family system down to individual level. Of course, the left value the individual while the right value family. So there are about four keywords, as I mentioned earlier. We have order, we have justice, we have equality, we have stability. For people on the right, their principal priority is usually order and stability. And that is why sometimes you will see recently Trump was tweeting law and order. That's actually because he's a rightist political ideology, and therefore what they are pushing for is order and stability. That's why you see them pushing for making sure that the economy is booming, pushing for make sure that there is a huge level of deregulation and privatization and all those kind of things. Now, if you go back to the left, it's about equality and justice. Like currently you see what is happening in the United States about Black Lives Matters and stuff like that. People may think it's actually really Black Lives Matters, but the fact is that it's a political agenda pushing for equality. And that's actually the principle governing the left ideology. Now, if you go to every other individual, the, the concept of creation of nature, like that is governing individual disposition towards things are usually governed around these key angles. So you can be extremely right by making sure that either order or stability or nothing, 
and you can be extremely left by making sure that either stability or justice or nothing, or you can be center right or center right, uh, center left or center right. So that's exactly what is defining the political party. So it's a willingness and inclination of individual psychology towards uh, his own intention to participate actively in the way his country is being governed. So that is actually what makes a political party system. But in our case in Nigeria, it's just a group of people with one aim. We want to grab power. And that is why jumping from one party to the other becomes like changing buses. So you, when you are going to a certain destination, you can shift from one bus stop to another, changing different buses or changing your plot, simply because there is nothing that is actually driving you to get into that particular political party other than to grab power and get what is the benefit in sharing the resources that are associated by being in power. So until we define what is it that makes me to participate in APC or PDP or any other political party, something that is going to attack me, something that even if I am not sitting on the table, I knew I that this group of people are actually protecting my interests, the interests of my principles, the interests of my beliefs, and the interests of the system that I am sure my children, great-grandchildren, and gen generations to come are secure and safe, then you will always have to bless. Political party is, 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 is actually a community where different people need to come together, to stay together, to work together, to achieve a given aim. A situation whereby it's coming down to a level whereby you need law to define who should be what in a political party clearly shows you how the, the, kind, of, um, the kind of bridges, the, the kind of walls that have been built within even the party structure. And this is really a very serious issue. Like look at what is happening today in APC, uh, our party, where the president had to quickly intervene to be able to bring sanity into the system. Why? Because there is different litigation, counter litigation, definition of right and wrong that are completely ambiguous, making the whole system going into a complete confusion that you, especially us that are not like people that are within the official cycle, we are even confused as to who is actually the national chairman. Because you listen to legal representation from the, the chairman, the, 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 Mr. Adam Soshomole, who, Adam Soshomole, who was the, um, the, the disbanded national chairman, you hear that the legal person, because we are not lawyers, so we are laymen, we listen, we just understood based on the interpretation they gave us. What they will say, they will have their own justifications. When you go to the other side, there is also justification. So you remain like someone who is suffering from irrepical swimming. You don't really know what is really happening until a final decision is reached, which you don't even have control over at all. So this is serious confusion simply because there is no ideology governing political party participation. And once we get these things right, by connecting why we should participate actively in politics, something that is driving me and my, my own feelings, my own something that is impulsively pushing me to go and participate and actively interact and get my governance system in accordance to the principle for which I believe as an individual or as a family, we will always be having this kind of confusion. So where we get it right from the, from the word go was in the setup and establishment of the political party system. So until we get the main reason, as I mentioned earlier, why I am belonging to this political party, somebody like me, I'm a conservative. You know, I may be a progressive conservative. I believe in culture. Like some of you that have been following some of my activities, you see I always advocate for al system. People were like, in this 21st century, why are you still advocating for the continuation of al system? It should be discarded. I said, no, I want it to be reformed to conform to modernity. That is a conservative belief in a progressive direction. So somebody will now tell you that he, he like gay. I will say, no, I don't believe a woman or a man I don't believe a man should be a gay or a woman should be lesbian. I believe there should be marriage, there should be family. That is a belief in conservative. So that is even one of the reasons why I actively identify with APC because some of the traits of President Muhammad Buhari, who is the leader of the party, happen to conform at that, they happen to conform to the principle of this conservatism, which I seem to somewhat agree with some, not all, but some of it. So these are the kind of things that's actually driving political party participation. It should, it's not just, I just obtain my membership card and I join, and then we struggle to get power. To what end? So this is exactly why I think we need a comprehensive review 
of the process of registering a political party, they must come with a definite, a structured ideological disposition to why they are bringing the members into the system. And, and also, of course, you cannot have multiple political parties if you really break it down into these ideological corners, as I mentioned earlier. That's why you see advanced democracies. You only see multiple political parties. Even if you have so many political parties, you will have them in maybe small constituencies struggling for kind of uh, smaller power. But at the center, there are always major political parties because the entire system is designed around the right and the left. And you only have one right and one left. It can be center, it can be extreme, or but at the same time, it's still right or left. So that's actually where I believe we have the problem. And that is why if we, if we continue in this direction, especially um, our generation with the younger generation coming into the political space, if we did not carefully review and define these sets of principles that is governing why we should be there, we will always be subjected to the Northern and the Southern and the Christian and the Muslim and the black man and the white man kind of political participation, which are very dangerous red lines that are capable of creating more destruction than even making a society. But once you define it according to this natural disposition to human impulse towards action, which is this order, stability, justice, and equality structure, you find out that you don't have to belong to any particular religion. Naturally, somebody is just like that. Even in a family, you will see sometimes the mother is more, um, is more, is more terse, she is more correcting, she is more disciplinarian, but the father is too liberal. This is just a natural thing. Even within children, you will see some people are this way and some people are that way. People are created with their own natural disposition to what impossibly drives them to action. So until we define this thing, we will always be subjected to religion, to tribalism, to sentiment, segregative politics that is always amplifying our red line, something we should try as much as possible to avoid. Um, that's actually uh, my view regarding this uh, uh, political party issues in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Um, let me see. Okay, thank you very much, um, uh, Adam. There. I don't know if uh, Ishmael is here. If Ishmael is not there, I would use the opportunity, first of all, to, uh, you know, because you, you touched on uh, political ideologies. And I know that a uh, professor is here and he is a professor of political science. I want to use the opportunity to, uh, Professor Femi, if you can put your camera and, uh, you know, if you can put your camera properly, I want you to please respond to this question. What is the APC political ideology? I want you to come from the, you know, dialectical uh, underpinning that actually shows the, you know, I don't know, because most time people ask this question, I don't know the academic uh, um, definition of what APC stands for, if it's right, left, center, Libra, you know, whatever that is. So you can help us here, please. Uh, Professor, um, you can, uh, let me spot, spotlight you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Mazi. I don't know that I will be asked to make a comment. Uh, all the same, um, I listened to the last speaker, and uh, I think he was quite clear about uh, his analysis. Uh, the APC, to answer your question, is supposed to, we call it an all progressives Congress. So that should tell you that it's supposed to be um, on the left you know, to follow his uh, basic classification. I refer to the uh, um, last uh, speaker. So, uh, but the reality is that the party that is supposed to be uh, um, on the left by way of its manifesto, restructuring is there. Restructuring actually is the core manifesto of the APC which means that the party agrees that there are structural um, ailments afflicting the Nigerian polity and state. And uh, it seeks to undertake the uh, uh, curative process of the structural maladies. 
but and uh, but unfortunately it appears we have a president who is a conservative and not just an ordinary conservative a hyper conservative uh, person sitting atop what's supposed to be a progressive left of the center party the apc is not altogether leftist but i just wanted to follow the simple classification the last speaker gave it's more of a, the both apc and pdp they are centrist in nature but it's just that one appears to be tilting more to the left apc has some welfareist agenda conditional cash transfer to the poorest of the poor. Uh, you've seen the Empower program, you've seen the Trader Money program meant to give microcredit to uh, the very poor uh, artisans and uh, petty traders. So those are some of the things the party has done, notwithstanding that can you know, attest to the fact that this is, is ideological leaning. But the fundamental things are not being allowed to be carried out by the president. Um, the party set up a committee to look into the restructuring agenda of the party. They were headed by Go Governor of Kaduna State, uh, Malam Nasir Rufai, under the past chairman of the APC, national chairman, Chief John DJ Oliven, the party submitted this report. Uh, but till today, the president has refused to touch it. In fact, in his uh, New Year address in 2018, he actually gave some knocks to those clamoring for restructuring. So okay. uh, that is that. And um, in terms of the way politics is played within the party, you will also see a trend whereby uh, what the last speaker said appears to be to hold true. The goal seems not to be execution of any manifesto, but power. And uh, this power is also being exercised with impunity. I make specific reference to the uh, governorship debacle in uh, Edo State. I live and work in one of the universities here. Uh, the present governor, to all intents and purposes, you can do your public opinion survey. I'm not from this state. Is refreshingly different from the past. Is indeed very progressive is a performing governor but because of some internal schisms those who feel maybe they are not being compensated enough in their own understanding of compensation the man who is supposed to be the defender of the uh you know the the, the good name of the party and the ideology of the party is actually the one that uh, led the jackals that pushed the governor out of the party. So for now, APC is like a, 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 it's not, it's not a party in an organic sense. It's just a platform for those who are seeking power for their own uh, purposes, not to serve the public. And when it appears it's not delivering, they opt out of it. So, and that is why I foresee a situation where before 2023, what I'm saying is that you may still have a 2014 scenario whereby a new party will emerge. Those who are pursuing their ambition within the APC to be president uh, versus one another, and uh, 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 one side seems to be having gaining the upper hand. Those who think they, they are being uh, they are on the losing side will then leave the party and mass, align with people of like minds elsewhere, and then we may have a new party. So 
for now, uh, the onus is on the civil society groups to all the various political parties accountable to whatever promises they have in their manifesto. Okay. And at the end of the day, to do a review, take stock and say, after four years, it appears you have done well in line with this, because your manifesto is your pact with the people. Uh, or to say you have failed woefully. Until we have, because I just need to make this clarification. When you interviewed me the, uh, the last time, I tried to make this point. Political parties are not the only engines that drive um, the, a democracy, especially when you talk of good governance. You need apolitical groups that will organize protests. Otherwise, you will not have good governance. You won't have accountable leadership. It is when those who are in power are being benchmarked and pressure is mounted on them, the, the people are on the streets. We need good roads. People are dying on our roads. We need jobs. Give us jobs. What did you do with our budget? That is when serious-minded people we get attracted by our politics because the political space will have become too hot for charlatans in that kind of milieu. And that is when you will begin to see a clear distillation of ideological groupings and camps in our political arena. For now, uh, the civil society, the voters themselves, they are too docile. And uh, 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 one other problem is the ethno-religious and geopolitical divide in the country. If the Southwest people are rooting for something, it is easy to condemn it in the North, like the restructuring clamor now. It appears the posture of most of the elites in the North is as if it was a, just a Southwest agenda that they tried to tolerate because they wanted power. And now that they've gotten power, they turn their back on it. When you continue to play that kind of politics, we will not be able to forge a, uh, a nationalist um, uh, vanguard that would, uh, you know, mobilize the country as a, as a collective to, towards progressive politics. Okay. So uh, what you will have as division and uh, ethnic bickering, and only God can help Nigeria. Thank you. I don't know for how long we are going to survive thank you, that thank kind you, of Prof. politics. Thank you, Prof. Thank I would, you. Yes, thank you very much for that um, uh, clarification. And obviously, you mentioned that um, the APC is a progressive left and that the president within the progressive left is hyper conservative. So, yes. at the same time, you said that it's a welfareist party. And one would then wonder is welfareism within the APC? something that is being driven by the party or the president. If it is the party, why would they drive welfare at the same time, leaving restructuring that they promised? I mean, it's, it's <laughs> are they cherry picking on their promises now? Anyway, I, um, let's not uh, probably get much into that now. Um, I would, you know, we would start uh, taking questions, um, take questions from people regarding uh, the uh, two submissions that we have had now. So that would help us uh, to progress. So if you have a question, you can raise up your hand. And at the same time, if it's possible, okay, I have a co Comrade Obina already. Uh, comrade Obina, can you please um, unmute yourself and ask your question? Thank you. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, Sorry. I've done that. Can, can you hear me? Yes, now, yes. Yeah, I, good evening, everyone. I, um, I somehow tend to disagree to a very large extent with um, some of the issues the speakers have, uh, has, have raised. Um, for instance, you see, um, APC as a party came up, uh, um, number one, to secure uh, power away from the drifting um, 
Malays we find as we found ourselves as a nation at that point in time. Now I would disagree entirely and violently, with all due respect, on um, putting any conservative toga on um, President Muhammad Buhari. Most of us aligned with him because of his pre progressive and welfareist um, inclinations, which you must I mean, have found it, have found as a disparity trying to bring um, 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 conservatives, conservatives in, into his um, ideological leaning. But the problem that has held back APC as a party is what we have all identified at this point in time, which is people always come together. Strength based fullers always come together. Let us all secure power. We sort things out later on. APC, even its manifesto, without even the promises that Masi Tochuku has highlighted, APC, even by its manifesto, stricto sensu, actually directs for devolution of powers, actually that, that dictates for for welfareist programs that is getting power back to the people. So, I mean, there, is, there can never be a progressive conservatism. Most of us, I mean, Buhari as, as, as a person, I mean, came into a situation, and of course, they haven't dined and wined with um, certain um, situations. It has held his progressive inclination and drive. And of course, certain, um, 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 level of um, challenges faced by him personally and um, by the structure that okay, he allowed to... Comrade Obinna, can you please round up uh, quickly? Um, yeah, that he, he allowed to, to, to come up around him. So my, I, I, I just needed to point out that um, uh, progressive conservatism is not something that we, we in, the, in the progressive um, school of thought and activism, um, we, we try to subscribe to with, with the person of, of the PNB and... and and APC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Obina. Thank you for that elucid submission. And at this point, I would want the two speakers, maybe we start with um, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Bunike uh, Hebu, just a two minutes response to what they've said so far. While you're doing that, um, uh, Mr. Gaba, you will get ready because you will speak after him. Then, and uh, the former Minister of uh, Sports, uh, Solomon Dalung, you also get ready. After, uh, after uh, Gaba, I will be calling you up to make your contribution. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Um, Obunike, you have the floor now. Thank you. Again, we can now hear you. Uh, we can hear you. Thank you very much for having me again. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. I, you know, when I spoke earlier, I deliberately didn't want to go into ideology and all that, you know, concerning Nigerian political parties, because even the manifesto, I didn't want to go into that because that would be uh, self-deceptive. Because, uh, for instance, um, the APC spoke about um, has the program to restructure Nigeria. The APC came, came on board. There was a document, the National Conference. It was thrown to the dustbin. What has been, I mean, in the last six years, what can you as a Nigerian say that there are steps that have been taken towards restructuring? The last time I checked, there was, there is none. So my own, but I'm still insisting that the best way out of this challenge is to ensure that the political parties are independent and they get their funding from members, just like in every other association. Every member of a political party should have voice and should have responsibility and is expected to contribute for the growth of the political party. Uh, last, he made mention of the president's intervention. In my view, is one of the problems we have. It's not good to have an individual who could determine what will happen in a political party or any association for that matter. Everybody should be equal. If they want to perceive as crisis, as far as I'm concerned, if they have allowed the process to go in, we we'll have disagreements. We we'll have institutions. We, we should have uh, strong institutions, not strong individuals. If anybody is, had issues with what was going on in APC, he could have challenged that in court. 
In fact, the people who went to court were the people who got judgment. So you could have gone to court, the courts are still there. I want a situation where the political parties will evolve. You do not, you do not declare ideology by mere pronouncement. How many people wrote the manifesto of the APC? How many people wrote the manifesto of PDP? How many of them are still members of PDP today? Quite a number of them must have moved over. Some of them are not here. So what I'm saying is, is a situation where we need to have strong political parties. And the best way to go about it is to, first of all, give confidence to members of the political parties that whatever you want, whatever you want to do, it could be done within the political party. For instance, years back, all the uh, in Anambra State, I still make Anambra, use Anambra State as an example. In Anambra State, the outgoing governor as then, Mr. Peter B, was perceived to have done very well, exceptionally well. It's expected that probably people who understood him or one way or the other, people who are in the party, will take over for him. Of course, somebody came back before he became a member of the political party. He got a nomination form for the governorship before he registered as a member of the political party. What does that tell you? Will people still have confidence in the political party? Even my own political party is not an exception to tell you that I'm not about talking about political parties here. And one of my discussion is how do we get it better? How do we move from where we are? In the last election in Anambra State, our candidate had to get the waiver before he could run as a, for the governorship of Anambra State. The implication is that probably he was not in the political party for up to two years. So what I'm saying is a situation where we need to ensure that the political parties are strong. And what that means, how, why is the best way to do that? Make the political parties strong, make them independent. Make every member of the political party should contribute to whatever that is happening in the political party. People talk about presidency and all that. I'm personally, I'm not bothered about where the president comes from. If you have a president that we probably drench in Van Niger, ensure that you have rails from Anambra to, to Medjugri, you have small ships that will, drive, drive, will move down from Manusha to uh, Lokoja, make sure that your report, uh, the, all the ports in the, in the south are working. Do you really care who the, where the person comes from? You don't. If the roads are done, do you care who does it? You don't. And if we are talking about ethnicity, it's not just our ethnicity, even in your families, People always look for one advantage or the other to have an edge over the other person. Even in your communities, they will say this person is from this bigger family. So it's not peculiar to us, it's, it's a normal problem. So what we'll do, we we'll go back to the drawing board, ensure that all the political parties in the structure, they write their constitution. I told you that our experience in APDA. Of course, we couldn't survive it because it was not meant to be a political party, uh, speaking. We had it as an alternative to what was going on in PDP then. Fortunately, the person we felt to, the group we felt to win the a case in court won, and we all left uh, APDA. But if you look at the concern of APDA, the manifesto of APDA, every member of the APDA has the minimum he must contribute every year. You are that, you will have data capturing. You must vote. The election is direct primaries. Every member of APDA must um, vote. Okay, and can, I, can I have a? Can I have a follow-up question just uh, quickly? Don't lose your train of thought here. But um, you mentioned about electronic data collection and you mentioned about having the data for political parties. Is there any political, in, any political party in Nigeria that has up-to-date data or that has electronic you know, uh, database at all? Because let us bear in mind here, we are not just having this conversation. This conversation is regarding COVID-19 series, how we can turn crisis. We are in a crisis, how we can turn this crisis into an opportunity for the society, which this topic is the Nigerian democracy and party politics deficit, meaning there is deficit in this polity. How do we, your party PDP or the APC, is there any of them that can utilize the, the, the crisis that we are in now to organize their party to, like you said, have party membership where people pay 50 naira, people, you know, 100 naira per, per month, you know, to make them members. Does that exist? Does that exist within your party or that does that exist within APC? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, to answer your question, as I told you, I'm not, I'm a member of PDP. I'm not speaking for PDP. But 
coming to PDP, how do we solve the problems we have? Sorry, but you are a member of the PDP. Do you have electronic, you know, you mentioned it at the beginning, electronic data collection. Do you have your form, your PDP membership? Is that in an electronic form? Is that any? Unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, we don't. Okay, thank you. So. Continue, then go. You have answered the continue. question. Continue. Yes, continue. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I should continue. Yes. Okay, so what I'm saying is that these are the things I didn't want to. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to start defending PDP over APC, APGA over uh, Accord, Accord over PPA. That is not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is, how do we get it right? That is the best thing to do. Let's, every political party should, for instance, the APC did their, their direct primaries. How many people voted? How many members of APC do we have? How do they know who voted? Who produced the register? Can, is there anywhere you can know, is there anywhere you can make reference to APC register in, let's say, a those states or on those states? I know the number of registered members. It's what they produce to you and the document, the register could be manufactured over the night. So what I'm saying is that we need to have that solution. It's a fundamental thing that all the political parties should do. Unfortunately, you don't expect the political parties, people who are presiding over the political parties now to do that. They will not, because you take the okay. powers away from them. Okay, but thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, thank you, you know, extremely. I'm so I'm so happy that you responded now. Thank you very much for your response. Um, I am aware that we have Ishmael here. Ishmael has joined us. As I said before, um, Ishmael is the you know uh, that's a barrister uh, Ishmael Ahmed, who is the SSA to President Muhammad Buhari and also a member of the APC. So um, uh, Gabba, please, Gabba the second, you have to pardon me. Um, we will come back to you for your follow-up thoughts, but let me quickly uh, yield the floor to Ishmael because he, he, he is part of those that were scheduled to speak. So Ishmael, if you're ready, uh, can I spotlight you now quickly so you can uh, um, have the floor and can you please turn on your camera and unmute your mic, Ishmael? If you're ready. If not, I'll go back to Gaba to take, um, you know, um, Adam Gaba to please uh, have uh, his uh, contribution. Okay, Ishmael, I can see you. Yeah, sorry, I can see you now. Ishmael, you're on. Okay. Uh oh, what happened, Ishmael, once more? Ishmael, you, can you please turn on your camera? I, I, I think his camera is on now. I think it's his network. Yeah. Can you hear me? Me. Yes, we can hear you now, but um, you should actually have a better network. You know, if you're if you're. I think where I am, the network is very. Oh, oh. it's very dark. Okay, so now. Do you mean to tell us that there is no good network at the presidency? <laughs> So Ishmael, can you go on then, please? <laughs> what makes you think I'm in Okay. Ishmael, you, you are on now. You can go on. I hope you're not in a bunker. You can go on. Your network should be better. Yes, but uh, please, I didn't get... It keeps freezing. Okay, he's frozen again. Uh, allow him to come back. Let's do that again. Okay, Ishmael. Okay, let's try uh, once more. He's back now. Let's try once more. You're back now. But the network is still fluctuating on the artist. So, I didn't get your question. Can I get it again? Ah, okay. That's fine. Um, I said. Uh, we are discussing this. The topic this evening, question. Can you repeat it again? Okay. The topic this evening is the Nigerian democratic, uh, sorry, the Nigerian democracy and party politics deficit. Now, this conference you are in, as would have been sent to you, is a video conference series that we titled COVID 19 How We Turn Opportunities, or How Could We 
turn opportunities in, uh, sorry, it turned crisis into opportunity. Today, we are looking at the Nigerian democracy and party politics deficit. Now, bearing in mind, that's what I expect you to now to tell us, bearing in mind the crisis, your party has been in the last couple of weeks, months. So what's your take? I think he's, he's, he dropped. On that note, I would bring back uh, uh, Mr. Adamu Gaba. Adamu, please, now can you take, take your follow-up um, uh, comment, please? Adamu, you're on. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, like um, uh, Professor Bunike said earlier, uh, once we get the party politics right and we get the right people in place of governance in this country, no one would really care about who is uh, from north or who is from side, south or who is coming from the west or the east or the Muslim or, or Christian or, or, or any, language, any tribe or any language. Nobody would really care. If you look at the fundamental structure of Nigeria, you know, politically, um, even from inception, even before the coming of colonial masters, this is like a collection of different kingdoms from Dahomey, Oyonle from that side, to Arochuku from this side and Kalabari, down up again to Kororofa, Kanemborno. Then you now have uh, the Sultanate Kingdom, uh, which is uh, the Sokoto Kingdom. If you look at all these configurations, these places, all of them have their own governance structures. Before a line was now cut out to create us into a, 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 a United State called Nigeria. But why do the British decide to bring us in this collective domain and define it as Nigeria simply because of the potential opportunities associated with this geographic location? Like he said earlier, um, uh, Mr. Bunike, very clearly, if you dredge River Niger, because if you notice Nigerians text, most of them are even named after rivers. Nigeria is a complete country that is dominated by river, from river Kaduna to river Imo, from river Gongola to river Taraba. All those are rivers. So if you look at all those things, you will see that what actually make Nigeria a country was a collection of market, of people that buy and sell to each other, especially when we have trans-Saharan trade from the other side and then across Atlantic trade to the other side. It's all about what we can pick from that place called Nigeria, sell it outside, get more money, and come back again and pick. So the roots that connect those geographic entities together and make them what they are is actually what is the, the main uh, um, stronghold of what is to be called a Nigeria. Fortunately for us, maybe at a certain time, we now got oil, which now took our attention completely away from what we're supposed to be a collection of markets of people that can buy and sell to one another, to people that are just waiting for what is coming from ground to survive. Now, as he rightly said, if you drench River Niger from, of course, Furcados to Nembe to Brass on that area, you can be able to dredge it up to Imo, up to Anambra, down into Kogi. Then you now come up to Niger State. From there, you can even divide it from Niger. You can go up to Kebi to Argungu, to the other side, and then you can come here through this place to Benue, to Numan, down even to Lake Do in Cameroon. And on top there, you can actually link them up via all these forests, including the Sambisa, where we are having serious problems to Lake Chad. So it's actually a very strong country where if you get the routes connected and you connect the market points, where you can connect people that are coming from the desert side to the people that are coming from the rainforest side, cross-breeding, transacting, leveraging, on the large amount of river that network the entire country, you will not have any problem about thinking of who is in charge. Because this thinking is so primitive and is driven by poverty and fear. People are afraid. Once somebody is at the center, somebody that don't share their affinity, maybe they are going to be subjected to certain difficulty that is unpredictable. And that's why there is this collective fear. But once people began to take responsibility for their survival, where I am sitting in my own village in Yola, maybe I can connect to one river Gongola or maybe Benue, or maybe I can connect to even river Numan, trade what I sell from that place, and it can come over the river down to Atlantic Ocean to export for dollars. 
or I can send it to Lagos, or I can send it to Calabar. Why do I have to worry about who is in charge if I have a normal functioning system? The fact of the matter is, human society is shaped by different identity classes. Everybody have what he believes. America is not perfect because it is US. America uh, uh, is, is what it is simply because it was able to leverage its own natural geography, its advantages, and then make it a form of trade to uplift the living standard of the people, to grow at least to a higher compass beyond what is called poverty that is going to drive them into confusion and unpredictable life that gives them a lot of fear and then want them to dominate governance systems so that they can continue to rule. Like if you check the entire Europe, what makes them even um, what they are, from Danube River up to even United States, Mississippi River, the longest river around the US. Those are the, those are the things that actually make this country. So we have it in our country, we abandoned it. We have large port facilities, but our goods only come mostly from, from Lagos. Thank God uh, the current administration is making some effort to actually have Calabar stabilized and have other port facilities, especially in Port Harcourt. But it's supposed to extend to our this 853 miles of shoreline. We are supposed to have largest port facility to service these 200 million consumers that are sitting here. And we're supposed to have those goods that are sitting within the hinterland carry traverse over river down to those Atlantic um, oceans to be exported out. Because it's even very cheaper, according to economics analysis and oceanographics, graphics, to actually transfer goods on water is eight times cheaper than to transfer it on land. Of course, if you look at even Nigerian roads that are so dilapidated, it's so disappointing that you will see Chi Exotic, which is a company that is operating in the Southwest, imports more of its raw material from South Africa than in Nigeria. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, we have all those raw materials that they need, but they will tell you clearly that they cannot be able to predict supply. And in those, they may disappoint their customers. These are all the things that when you look at it, you will just begin to wonder what is happening. Why will Echo Hotel and Suites order most of its own, um, uh, uh, what, what they're serving, their, what, what order what most of the things that they use to actually serve their customers as food and other items from South Africa. These are the things you need to look at. And some people clearly analyze it. It's actually usually cheaper even to import from South Africa than to import something in Canada. You can imagine this kind of issue simply because South Africa is interfacing between Indian Ocean and of course now Is anyone still here, Adam? I think it's okay, I'm sorry.
Uh, we are hearing you. Yes, go ahead, please. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm terribly sorry for all this, uh, 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 these inconveniences. There's a lot.
Yes, 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 we can hear you, but it appears you're having an echo or something.
Um, I don't know whether I'm, I'm coming across. Hello. Mas are you hearing me? Mas are you hearing me? No. I don't know whether you're hearing me or not. If you're not hearing me, simply continue. Hello, are you hearing me now? Yeah, are you hearing me now? Sorry, if you're not hearing me, can I don't know. I think my system is playing up. Oh, okay, um, if you're having me, I think my, my audio has a problem. I don't have, um, the only question I wanted to, what I wanted uh, just, if, if it took just five seconds to point on is, what is the current state of the law? If uh, say someone moved from one political party to another, if you're elected as a governor of a federal state, for instance, I think there was some confusion. Initially, we, uh, I don't think the state of the law is clear now. The last time the, the former deputy senate president said that some amendments have been carried out to address that in the in the electoral act so i don't know if anyone can enlighten us what is the current state of the law when a governor elected on the platform of apc for instance moved out from apc to become uh, to become a member of the pdp where there is no faction in apc what is the current state of the law i don't know i think is it clear now
the the essence of this meeting is to have this discussion and that is why we have uh, we, we don't simply invite ourselves to talk that's why we invite government officials ex-government officials and potential government officials to come in here and listen to what you are saying so this is part of the building process this is part of the nation building process that you're having and the talk shop you called it we will continue today uh, when we invited um, ismail to this talk about more than a week ago we didn't know that he will yesterday that we appointed a number of the apc caretaker committee and and, 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 and yesterday it happened so hopefully hey he sees the part of the people who is going to undergo undertake the restructuring of the APC, maybe he will take some of our suggestions here on board. And that is why this talk show we're having is very, very important. So thank you.